Mel asked me to, because we had, because of Blue Leaves, you know, in the farce form, he asked me if I would help shape these five ramshackle acts of Two Gentlemen of Verona into something that could be, take place in 90 minutes and protect the ravishing poetry that's in the play, but uh, tidy up the construction. And it's one of the plays, you're not even sure how much, you know, how much of it is Shakespeare's. And uh, so there was, so it was, I didn't feel like I was sullying with, uh, with you know, with something, um, sullying something uh, that untouchable, you know, it was not one of, it was not, Twelfth Night or Hamlet or Antony and Cleopatra, and uh, so we reorganized. I just resh I reshaped it, and uh, and then we decided since Gall was going to be the resident composer that summer at the park, that we would use songs. And since the play was designed not to be done in the park but to be done on a truck that would travel the five boroughs, that we didn't want people to be put off by the poetry. It was also, so you had, it was a summer of great racial unrest. It was terrible, it was a terrible summer. The, the promise was terrible. And uh, of violence, and we said, God, if we bring up this play with courtly sentiments of love, you know, I mean, they'll be out with machine guns and the, you know. So we decided that the, we would have a couple of songs they would act as pre-subtitles, that the meaning of the scene would be put in the air, so that one then would have the meaning and would not could listen to the poetry with, with the meaning already in you, in the air. And those songs, those little postcards, those little sub, added up to about thirty by the time we were finished, and uh, and it was. Great. Mel had worked with Raoul Julian, wanted Raoul to be in it, and and then uh, we decided to have somebody from every neighborhood that we would that we would play in the five boroughs.